All right, so welcome back. Uh, today, we're gonna be making some particle effects for our game for when we destroy our pieces. So if I swap these two pieces, I got a nice little subtle, simple particle effect. So stick around and let's get started. Okay, so let's dive right in here. So the first thing I wanna do I'd actually already recorded a video about a few small bug fixes, but uh, then it got randomly deleted. So I want to kind of talk about a few bug fixes that we want to look at here. And unfortunately, I already have these coded because I didn't want to delete them because I thought, you know, things are a little... I didn't want to delete something I shouldn't have deleted. So the first issue is one that was coming up where when you would make a... Uh, a color bomb, and then if you made a match with that color bomb, oftentimes it would spawn another bomb in its place. Uh, either a column bomb, a row bomb, or an adjacent bomb. And that issue comes up because when you swap with a color bomb, it still goes through and checks to see how many of each kind of match there are. So if there's, um, you know, if there's four or more in a column, then it makes a column bomb. And so that means it switched out the color bomb. Uh, if there's five in, or not five, four in each direction, I think it makes an adjacent bomb. And if there's five, it makes another color bomb. So uh, to fix that, the first thing I did is I made a quick little variable here. This is in the uh, grid script. So I have just this little check here to see was a color bomb used. And if it was, um, well, I, I default for this to be false because usually you wouldn't use a color bomb. Now, the next thing I did was I went to wherever we have our after refill method and I added an extra check here. So after we did the move checked is false, the damage slime is false, um, we make the color bomb used false as well. So um, that means that the next turn it won't think that we used a color bomb. So we're changing it back to its regular state. And then uh, I put in a really really quick check here uh, where I just wanted to see if uh, a color bomb was used. So here this check was already here in the code from when we finished making the color bomb. So we have this is color bomb. So if one of the pieces is a color bomb then color bomb used is true and we return true. So we're only turning that color bomb used to be true if one of the two pieces that we swap is a color bomb. And that should make it so that you no longer have an extra bomb appearing after you swipe out a color bomb. So there we go. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna talk about today, I'm gonna to save my scene really quickly here, is uh, making some effects that we can see when we destroy a piece. And there's two kinds of effects I'm gonna go over. One is gonna be using Godot's built-in particle system. The other is going to be using uh, an actual animation. So we'll have two different ways of making effects. And then later on, we'll add sounds and stuff. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make myself a new scene. I'm going to add a Node 2D as the base. And then to this Node 2D, I'm going to add a Particle System 2D. So Particles 2D. Now, Particles 2D, um, if I zoom way in here, you can kind of, oh, OK. I guess it just has the one thing. Um, so what we have to do in order to make this work is go to the process material in the tab, change this from null to new particles material, and you'll see it's already kind of starting to work. So most of the changes that you're going to make to the particle system are going to be in this material. So to do that, you would click on the material itself, and now you have access to all kinds of things. Right now the emission shape is a point. I'm going to change that to be a sphere. Actually, I'll make it a box instead. And my box extents, I want to be 64 by 64. Actually, that's probably too big. I probably want it to be 32 by 32. So 32 by 32. Now to keep things in perspective, I'm gonna zoom out and look at the whole um, scene here. So that's about the width of one tile. So that's good. Now. Uh, the next thing I want to do is go to spread, and I want my spread to be the max it possibly can be. So instead of 45, I'm going to crank that all the way up to 180. Uh, I'll leave the flatness alone. For my gravity, right now it's at 98. I'm going to 
lessen that a bit, say make it 50. And that affects how quickly the things fall. So right away you don't necessarily see, there we go, now you can kind of see it happening. I'm going to change my initial velocity to be, let's say, not 355. Let's do something down here. Yeah, that's not too bad. And the, whenever you see these random variables, it's 0 or 1, and it's how random you want it to be. I'm just going to make that nice and random. I'm not going to change, actually, I will change my angular velocity. I'll set it to 360, which I believe is 360 degrees per second, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I don't want to do any orbit velocity. Orbit velocity makes it kind of uh, orbit the point. Uh, linear acceleration. I'm not going to do anything with linear acceleration. I'm going to do stuff with scale. So I want my scale to follow a curve. Whenever you see one of these uh, options that has a curve on it, I'm going to click that and choose a new curve texture. And then you need to click on the texture itself, and it brings you the ability to edit the curve. I want my scale to go up and then slowly down. So I'm going to take this handle on the left. I'm going to put it down about 0 0.25. I'm going to right click about here and add a point. I'm going to raise that point up. And then I'm going to grab this other side and bring it all the way down to zero. So you can see that kind of makes them phase in and out of existence here. All right. Now to go back to where I was, I'm just going to hit this little back arrow there. Um, do, do, do. Yeah, I can't do that with gravity. I was hoping maybe I could do a curve with gravity too, but I can't. Uh, for my color, I want to make a color ramp. And that's going to be a new gradient texture. And I'm going to click on that. And it'll bring me to a gradient. I'll make a new gradient. Click on that. And I want this gradient to have, um, let's say, five points in it. And these indices, the first one... I'm going to make it so that it's completely transparent. And the last one is going to be completely transparent. And then I'm going to make these in between be a shade of white that is partially transparent. So the further up I go, the less transparent it's going to become. So this one here is going to be white and only a little bit transparent. There we go. And then this last one is going to be full white. All right. I know this isn't super interesting to look at right now because it's just dots. So what I want to do in order to make this something that I can actually visualize, I'm going to go all the way back to the particle itself where it says particles 2D. I'm going to arrow down and I want to look at the textures. So uh, I'm going to add a texture to this. And I've made a uh, particle material that I've added into the itch.io file. So it's just this little star. So I'm just going to drag this into my art folder. Maybe. Okay, maybe I have to have the art folder open. Uh, I'm just going to drag this into my art folder. Uh, did that come in? All right. I'm going to have to do this the hard way. Oh, there we go. All right. Now, I want this star material to be the texture. And automatically, you see things change. It's probably a little too twirly. So I'm going to go back to my material here. And I'm going to turn down my angular velocity. So let's go down to, say, 180. That's probably still a bit too twirly. Let's cut it in half again, say 90. That's not too bad. Now, my color is fading really, really fast. So I want to go back to my particle. And I want to leave my amount the same. I want to go to time. I'm going to make this 0 0.4. I'm going to turn on one shot. And I'm only turning on one shot for a second because I want to see what this looks like. Because I'm not going to have it be a constant particle system. Instead, I want it to be an effect that comes up. 
it's probably too many. Let's go down to like four. I want to keep this effect nice and subtle. I'm going to make my lifetime a little bit longer, say 0 0.7. Alright, cool. Now, my color is probably fading too quickly. So, I'm going to turn one shot off and then turn emitting off and on again. Um, I'm going to go back to my particle material and go down to color, my color ramp, my gradient, and my actual gradients. And I'm going to add a few more spots to the array. Say, I'll make it eight instead of five. It automatically fills in those empty spaces with black. So, I'm just going to go back and make them white here, and then I'll play with the transparency. And last one, there we go. So this last one, I want to be completely transparent. A little bit less transparent. Uh, even smaller amount transparent. Okay, so that's a little bit better. You could spend so much time messing around with these little um, effects with the particles. That's actually not bad. I'm gonna make the box a little bit smaller and then that's pretty much what I wanted. Now I'm gonna have another effect that's animated on top of this. So I don't wanna go crazy with this. I want it to be relatively simple. So I'm gonna to go to my Box, and I'm going to make my extents 16 by 16. Um, when I'm experimenting with values, I always just like to either double it or cut it in half. If it's too much, I cut it in half, and if it's too little, I double it. All right, cool, that's good. Now, I'm going to leave one shot on, um, and I'm going to add a script to this. So I'm going to go back to the Particles 2D. Um, oh, nope, I'm on the Node 2D now. Particles 2D. I'm going to go down here to the script, and I'm going to create a new script. And I'm going to save this in my scripts folder. Um, I'm going to call this, uh, maybe, destroy particle. Uh, and then I'll save that. Now what I want to do is in the ready function, I want to turn emitting on. So, emitting is true. I can get rid of that pass. Now I'm also going to add a timer node to this, to the particle system. So, and I'm going to connect the timeout signal to that particle system I just made. And I'm just going to queue free the particle when this is over. Cool. So I'm going to, oops. Cancel. I want to rename this node to, we'll call this particle effect. And I'm going to save this node as particle effect in my scenes folder. So there we go. So there's my effect. Now I'm going to go back to the game window here. I'm going to go into the grid, make this nice and big. And I want to make a reference to that particle first. So I'm going to go all the way up to the top. And I'm going to make a little section here for effects, since I'm going to have two of them. So I'm going to make a little comment. So effects. And first I'm going to make a reference to the particle effect. So I'm going to call var particle effect is equal to. And now I want to preload this. So I'm going to preload resources, scenes. And what did I save it as? It's not auto-filling right now. Uh, in my scenes folder, I saved it as particle effect. There we go. So, particle of, good lord, effect.tscn. All right, cool. Um, make this nice and big again. Now all I want to do is just create this whenever I destroy a piece. So I'm going to go to my destroy matched method here. Uh, I'm using this over thing on the left here to find my, my heading since I have quite a few things in this script. So in my destroy matched method, when I destroy a piece, I'm going to, uh, oh, 
I guess I need to create a method to create that particle first. So let's create a method to create a particle. So let's say function make particle. Actually, let's make this, yeah, let's make this nice and reusable. We'll call this make effect so that we can use the same function for uh, the other effect we're going to use. So this is going to need to know what effect to make. Uh, and it's going to need to know where to make it. So column row. All right. Do, do, do. There we go. So what I want to do is I want to say uh, var current is equal to effect dot instance, which means that we have to use this only with something that we can create an instance of. Otherwise, we're going to get some errors. Then I want to say um, current dot position is equal to grid to pixel and I want to pass in column row uh, cool and then I want to add child current all right cool I can get rid of this little pass here and I can call that from when we destroy a piece so I'm gonna call make effect and the effect that I want to make is going to be the particle effect and I want to make it at column I row J so let me save that all right let's uh, let's see what I broke <laughs> so uh, let's hit play here uh, let's make a match no oh, cool nothing broke works pretty much the way I wanted it to um, now you can play around with this uh, you can use something different if you don't like stars. I just thought it, stars kind of fit the theme. Um, you can have more than one effect. You can have different effects based on which piece is being matched. So like you could have um, an effect that's only for the orange pieces or effect that is only when you use like a row or column bomb. I just think it's kind of nice and subtle. And we're going to be adding another effect on top of it anyway. So I think this is good. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter. Uh, you can join my Discord. There's some really great people in the Discord who are totally willing to step up and answer some questions if I'm not available. And yeah, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.